G'day, welcome to Mount Cranber Apiculture. It's Sunday, uh, the 17th of October. Beautiful sunny day, just back at Bucker. Going through the balance of these hives. Um, this is a triple 10 frame on end of September. I um, noted that they look queenless. Um, so I'm just back today to have another look. And um, yeah, they are just hopelessly queenless. Um, still a few bees in here, but um, one of the signs of queenlessness when you just take that lid off, they got a real um, hollow, um, forlorn buzz about them. Just they don't sound like a normal beehive. Um, so, when you look through here, there's just no brood at all, no eggs. No larvae, no pupae, and no no means of um, of making a queen. So, what do we do with this? Um, we have to do something because under the biosecurity code of practice, um, we have to manage weak hives and and look after our bees. So. A lot of people would go, oh my God, I need a queen, I need a queen. Um, rush out and buy one. Um, I guess typically with that is that these bees have been queenlets for, you know, quite a while, probably a month. Um, to introduce a queen properly, you'd, they really like going into hives with lots of young nurse bees, so there wouldn't be many young bees in this hive, so you, you're taking a bit of a risk putting a you know, forty-five dollar, fifty dollar queen into a into a hive like this, but plenty try it, and I'm sure it would work most of the time. But um, I'd rather have fifty bucks in my pocket than than throwing it at a beehive like this. Another option is to um, just take all the supers off and give them to other hives. I've had a good look in here. There's no no disease. There's no AFB in there. So you can just take those resources off, give them to other hives, and just shake these bees out on the ground. So that's another option. The, the real value in this hive is the three supers full of comb and honey and probably a little bit of pollen in there as well. So you don't want to lose that. You don't lose the bees because they just fly away into other hives. Only thing we can do is uh, drop a frame of um, eggs and larvae in here. So it's important if you do that to yeah. make sure you throw a heap of nurse bees in there well. So all, as well, all the bees that are attached to that frame and two or three shakes of nurse bees as well, just to give them the, give the hive the um, type of bee that is able to make, raise a queen from worker larvae. So just for the purposes of the exercise that's what we'll do so I'm just going through other hives here now so as soon as I find a couple of good frames of brood I'll drop them in here. Yeah. Um, we'll definitely push it back to a single because a hive like this that's just lost that organisation and the ability to, to, op to, to operate as a beehive are very prone to beetles. Uh, so the last thing I want is to lose three supers full of honey and, and wax to bloody small hive beetle. So this is when they are really are vulnerable. Um, so that's what we'll do. We'll just drop these supers on other hives. I'm not gonna worry about the bees in them and we'll um, drop some brood in here. So we'll go and do that now. So I've just opened up another hive nearby. Um, caught the queen and <clears throat> I'm gonna throw um, a frame of seal brood in with the attached bees just to give this hive a bit of a boost. Um, I just haven't found a, a frame there that I like that's full of eggs. So I want to put some, um, I want to make sure I've got a frame there with plenty of eggs. But what I want to do is just reduce the congestion inside the hive. So I'm going to shake a couple of frames of nurse bees in here as well. So bees off um, frames of wet brood or open brood. So that'll just give this hive a, a boost to those nice young nurse bees. and. Um, as soon as I get a frame of eggs as I go along these hives, I'll drop that in as well. So I'll just throw a few shakes of bees in.
so I've just kept looking through these hives and I've gone one better than uh, getting a frame with young brood on it, um, young larvae. I've actually got one with queen cells, so the hive that's come out is of this sort of having a bit of a thinking about swarming. So one, two, three, four, five. So there's eight or nine swarm cells on that frame, so um, that's a cracker to put in there. They can get straight to work. Rather than having to build a queen cell, they've got one there. Um, so we'll come back and revisit this hive, but, but just to recap, um, hopelessly queenless, not many young nurse bees. Um, so we've shaken two or three frames of nurse, nurse bees in there from another hive. Got a frame of seal brood and a frame with um, a heap of queen cells in it. So this hive should um, go ahead and requeen itself, providing there's no mishap with the queen when she's out mating. It's a great example why it's okay to start with one hive, but you should be looking at having two or three, because if you've just got one hive, you're not sustainable. As you can see, if you've got two or three, you can take out of the good hives and give to the weak hives and maintain your three hives that way. So um, don't fall into this trap of, oh, I'm just gonna have one beehive because I've got a small yard rule, that's all I need. Um, you, you need two hives at the very least to, to be sustainable to be a good beekeeper. So think about that when you're starting, that um, you always have enough gear for two hives. All right, well, we'll come back to this um, later on um, and just see how they progress. But yeah, this is um, an easy way to deal with the queenless hive.